Have you ever wondered how you could bring something you made in Affinity, like this, and bring it into Resolve so that you could do stuff like this with it? Here is how you do it. So I know a lot of people pair up Affinity and DaVinci as a cheaper way to completely replace the Adobe Suite, but at the time of this video we don't actually have like an integration between these two pieces of software. There's no Adobe Dynamic Link that can just magically link the two up. Anything that you make has to be manually imported so that you can retain all of the different layers. There's a bunch of different ways you could do that, but today I'm going to show you two methods that I use. Quick disclaimer, for the purposes of this video I'm just using this little Twitch animation as an example. I'm I'm not really going to go into detail as to how I actually animated all this because I've saved that for another video. And also, I don't actually use Twitch, so this is just my friend Benga's channel. Go check him out if you're on Twitch. So method number one is to use PSD files. This is how I'll bring things into Resolve like 90% of the time. All of the apps inside the Affinity Suite will let you export as PSDs and retain all of their layers, but there's a few things you have to set up inside of Affinity first to make sure that Resolve will recognize your PSD. First of all, you have to make sure you're working in an 8-bit RGB color space. I can't tell you how many times this has steered me wrong, where I've set up a document and I've not actually set it to the right color space and then Fusion won't recognize it. It's important that you do that, so save yourself a headache and do it right at the start when you start making your Affinity document. My second housekeeping tip is to make sure that you're working within the dimensions of your video. If you're working on a 9 by 16 video for TikTok, for instance, or Instagram, then make sure that your document also has the same dimensions. For the purposes of this video, I'm working to 1920 by 1080, so I'm going to set my Affinity Designer document to that. I'd recommend a DPI of 72 or at the highest 96. Most monitors will be 72 or 96 DPI, so there's really no need to go above that. If you start making your documents like 300 DPI, you're going to run into problems when you bring things into Fusion because those files are just huge. What I'd also suggest is grouping and rasterizing your layers depending on what you're doing in your animation. So for example, I don't need all the individual layers within this Twitch logo, so I'm just going to rasterize them and bring them into Resolve as one single object. Lastly, and this can be tedious depending on how complicated your document is, you have to make sure that all your layers are named. Now, Affinity will do this thing where it will kind of automatically assign it a name, but you do have to go in and manually name all of the layers. Otherwise, Resolve won't recognize your layers. So save yourself the hassle and just do it as you go if you're working through your Affinity document. So at this point, you're finally ready to export your PSD and bring it inside of Resolve. Go to File, Export, and it'll bring up a bunch of different options for you. Select PSD and export it. It doesn't really matter what settings you use because when you bring it into Resolve, it's gonna rasterize each of the layers anyway. As long as they're named, it will bring them in correctly. Once you're in Resolve, jump into the Fusion tab and go Fusion Import PSD, and then just select the file that you created. For some reason, you can't just drag it into Fusion, which is a bit annoying. You do have to use the import function, but once you do that, it will bring in all your layers as one big node tree. These little normal nodes are actually just merge nodes. From here, you could just start animating all your different layers. So I'm just gonna add in some transform nodes here and I'm just gonna start moving things around and creating a little like intro splash. You'll notice that when I start to move things, each object has the same 1920 by 1080 bounding box. So if you want to rotate, for example, you're gonna run into this issue. To get around that, just adjust the pivot on each of your objects from within the transform node. This is a bit like your anchor point within a door the pivot is essentially functions the same way. It just sort of selects where you want to move that object from. Also, if you decide, for example, you want to change the color of like this Twitch icon, all you have to do is change it in the original Affinity document, then quickly export it again as a PSD. As long as you save the file with the exact same file name, Resolve will just automatically update it for you. So what I've done here isn't actually too complex and this method's really, really good if all you're wanting to do is just animate things and bring them into frame. One of the drawbacks of this method is the fact that these are all rasterized layers. So they effectively just work like media and nodes. They're like static images. So if I wanted to have this little heart icon fill up whenever the cursor's clicked on it, I'd have to use a different method. And that brings us on to method two, and that is using SVGs. If you're unfamiliar with SVGs, these are vector files that basically let you scale up little graphics or shapes, hence the name scalable. 
vector graphics. You could create these inside of Affinity Designer. You can also create them inside Illustrator. And the good thing is that Resolve actually supports these as well within Fusion, which is good because it means we could start to create some more detailed changes within our animation. I'll show you what I mean. So back in Affinity Designer now, we're going to jump into the export persona up here. We're going to select our little heart icon and then we're going to go into the export defaults. We're going to select file format and select SVG, then hit create slice. Slices basically let you take certain parts of your document and just export them as their own individual asset or their own individual layer. Jump into the little slices tab. You can just uncheck this one here, by the way. This is just a default export. Click on the heart again, and then what you want to do is expand this bounding box to be the same size as your original composition. That way you don't have to reposition it once you bring it inside the Resolve. Hit export slices and save your file. Come into Resolve, go into Fusion again, hit import and then SVG. It'll come up with a little box asking you just to confirm the dimensions. They should be the same if you've already created the same dimensions within your Affinity document, so just hit OK on that. It'll bring your SVG into Fusion as this little grouped package in one node. If you double click on that, you'll notice that inside that group are all the components that make up this little SVG. So you have a shape path connected to a background color node, and you also have an alpha layer as well. And this is good because we can now animate it to be solid once the cursor clicks on it. And because this is a vector within Fusion, there's a whole bunch of different things that we can control as well. So I'm going to change the color to go from purple to red when it gets clicked on to indicate that it's been liked. And right now you're probably thinking, okay, if this gives me way more control, why didn't I just import the whole thing as an SVG from the start? You can do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that technically. The only reason I don't do that is because Fusion can start to get really busy and hard to navigate. If you bring something from Finity into Fusion just purely as an SVG, that's a lot of different nodes and it can get a little bit cumbersome. And also this only really works for vector-based graphics. So things like text and rasterized images aren't going to import correctly as an SVG. So personally, I'll just use a mixture of these two methods. I'll import it first as a PSD and then bring that into Resolve. And if there's any additional bits that I want to animate after the fact, I'll just jump back into Affinity and export those individual layers as SVGs. And that's it. You've got all of your Affinity layers inside of Resolve and you can play around and animate them and make some cool stuff. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning more about Affinity or Resolve, then consider subscribing. I work full time as a content creator and unlike a lot of creative professionals, I do not use Adobe. So if you're looking for an alternative, then this is your channel here and I'll see you in the next one.